back lecture three for global economic issues this lecture will break up into parts and we're going to focus in on the size of the global economy what it looks like why it matters and off we go all right so if we think about the size of the global economy, we can see that last year, 2019, the total global economy was roughly $133 trillion, measured in US dollars, which was up from about $120 trillion in 2017. This year, 2020, well, we'll talk about this in lecture four, uh, due to the uh, COVID-19, we have a different story, but we'll uh, spend a whole week thinking about that and what it means. But let's focus on essentially pre-COVID-19 world economy, get an idea of where we were and where we were headed before the pandemic. As you can see by the graph on the right, the United States makes up almost a quarter of the of the world's economy with China uh, close behind. Now this graph is from 2018 data and it's broken up into regions. You can see Japan is a big player, India, Germany, uh, a lot of other countries, Latin America much smaller, uh, countries in Europe uh, together they're a huge part of the global economy uh, Asia altogether are a huge part of the global economy uh, you can see Canada is a relatively um, big player by itself but next to the US um, it's pretty small so if you look at the 10 biggest economies now, we see that China has passed us up. And the United States is second. And we see India as a huge player. Japan, Germany, Russia, Indonesia, Brazil, United Kingdom, and France make up the top 10 this year. Uh, the BRIC countries, which is B-R-I-C, are now, they used to be considered emerging economies, but now they are uh, more than emergent, emerging. So BRIC would be B, Brazil, R, Russia, I, India, and C, China. Again, China and India together make up nearly 3 billion people, as opposed to our 350 million people. So, what does biggest mean in this context? So, when the last lecture we talked about value created by trade as the way to estimate economic value, consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So, we're looking for those areas under the demand curve to try to get an idea of what economic value is. But in practice, though, this surplus value is really too much of a challenge to measure for every trade in every country for every day and every year and aggregate it up. So as a proxy, economists turn to something we can actually measure, which is called gross domestic product or GDP. And you often hear, especially on the news, and when we're talking about the size of the economy, GDP, GDP, GDP. So GDP is really precisely defined because we are measuring it and we're measuring it by looking at prices and quantities. So it's the output of all producers in a country evaluated at the price. And it's not just some region, firm or sector, but everything in that country. So as we got the examples below, uh, nails, toothbrushes, tractors, shoes, haircuts, all the goods and services that you can 
that exist in an economy, we're trying to aggregate them up to get an idea of the economic activity. So the more trades we make, the more sales we make, the more we uh, exchange, the bigger an economy is going to look. Now, we can measure this GDP in three different ways. Spending, production, and income. So spending is the total amount we spend by households, firms, and the government, and residents on our home economy's products. So whatever we're buying and selling here at home. And this could be uh, imported, I mean, as long as they're bought and sold here, right? Or you could look at production, how much we produce in the industries operated in the home economy. And so now we're looking at value added, right? So we're looking at the um, uh, the value added by each industry, which is the cost of goods and services used as inputs to production is subtracted away from this value added. Or we could look at income, the sum of all incomes received, wages, profits, self-employed. Uh, typically, we look at spending as the main way to think about GDP because uh, technically it's pretty easy. So GDP spending, what it is and what it's not. So GDP spending then is measured by market price times market quantity or total revenue, which is area B and C in the supply and demand graph. Now we know that total surplus is area A and B. That's in theory what we're trying to measure. But as a proxy, we're using area B and C. So GDP is only going to equal total surplus if area A and C are equal, which the way I've drawn it in the graph here, man, kind of they're close enough, maybe. But that depends on the demand curve. Because if the demand curve gets steeper, which means the demand, um, we need this product. The word is uh, inelastic in the sense that we need this good. And so price changes are not going to change the quantity demanded very much. We can see that as the demand curve gets steeper, as it moves up so it becomes almost a um, vertical line, that area A is going to wildly exceed area C. So at best, GDP is a proxy. Uh, it could be a lower bound, could be an upper bound, depending on the relationship between the demand and supply curve. But since we can measure it, we can we use it. And would we like to replace it with those surplus values? Yeah, we would. Uh, we're going to do it anytime soon? No, because measuring the consumer and producer surplus for every good and service, like I say, around the world is too big a challenge right now. So we're going to go with GDP as our proxy. Okay. So it's the most straightforward way to measure the size of the global economy. It measures economic power. Where are the biggest markets? The United States is a big consumer economy. I mean, that's how we drive things, by purchasing power of consumers. And when consumers get scared, the economy shrinks because they stop uh, buying things, start saving, and as they start saving, transactions get smaller. But note that uh, GDP also really is only looking at market transactions. It does not measure any non-market goods and services provided by nature. So there's also a big push for the idea of a green GDP, which would be accounting for the environmental services provided by different ecosystem features like filtration by um, uh, uh, wetlands or the biodiversity that keeps the web of life alive. But we'll come back to this later on a different lecture further on in the semester. Just note that GDP is a proxy and it's only 
one measure of the economic uh, activity or the econo the size of an economy. And um, there are other ways to do it. It's not a perfect measure, but it does give us a sense of whether the economy is growing as an expansion of the economy or it's shrinking as in a recession or a depression, which we've witnessed now with the pandemic and definitely a shrinking of the economy. So we look at GDP over time, we can see things have changed. So if we go and look at this chart in 1980, which is the year I graduated from undergrad, we can see the U.S. was um, uh, about $3 trillion, and it's the world's leading economy with Japan as second. So we are always concerned about Japan and Germany being our main competitors, with Italy being fourth. Now, in 2020, you can see for the first time in my lifetime, 60-some years, China has become the world's largest economy, and the U.S. is now second. That's a big change because all my entire life, the U.S. has been the economy, the biggest world's biggest economy, the main driver. But now that's changed. China is now number one, and India is now number third. And look where, follow the path backwards for India. Back in 1980, they were number nine with um, 300 some billion dollars, and now they're up to 13 trillion. Uh, Japan has dropped from second to fourth. Some of the European countries, like Italy, has dropped off the charts. Um, Brazil has been on a rocky road all over the place. France has dropped down. So the big powers back in 1980 are not the same as, as they were, uh, as they are today, with China and India becoming much bigger players than they were. Because if you look at China in 1980, uh, they're not even on the chart. And now they are the world's biggest economy, and uh, we'll talk about how that can be. So think about that as you're planning your next 40 years of business. That the U.S. was replaced by China as the world's largest economy, which means they have the potential to be the world's largest consumers, quickly followed by India. And that's 3 billion people. And here is, we'll uh, talk about this uh, idea of the GDP is a measure of economic flow, not the stock of economic wealth. And this is key to understand the difference between a stock and a flow, and this is where we'll pick up on part two.